Let's learn about GLP-1 receptor agonists, short for glucagon-like polypeptide 1. GLP-1 agonists are drugs that work by activating the GLP-1 receptor and activating signal cascades which eventually lead to a host of different functions. The one picture here is how GLP-1 receptor activation can lead to insulin secretion. Typically after ingestion of food, the small intestine produces the GLP-1 hormone. In the pancreas, GLP-1 receptor is expressed in beta cells, and GLP-1 stimulates insulin secretion. GLP-1 also stimulates insulin gene transcription, beta islet cell growth, and neogenesis. Glucagon secretion is also inhibited. Let's look more closely at this important mechanism in the pancreatic beta cell. Glucose enters the beta cell via GLUT2 transporters. It's metabolized to produce an increase of the intracellular ATP to ADP ratio, closing ATP channels. This results in membrane depolarization, which opens the voltage-dependent calcium channels, VDCCs. Calcium triggers the exocytosis of insulin-containing granules, in other words, insulin secretion. GLP-1 also has effects on other organs outside of the pancreas. GLP-1 lowers glucose production in the liver. GLP-1 notably also contributes to inhibiting gastric emptying, slowing digestion in the stomach. GLP-1 decreases gastric motility by directly affecting gastric smooth muscle and also inhibits postprandial, postmeal acid secretion. It decreases small intestine movement by inhibiting smooth muscle activity, resulting in lowered absorption of nutrients in the GI tract. Reduced motility likely results in less severe glucose fluctuations after meals and reduces the need for a large and rapid insulin response. Also, GLP-1 has amazing effects on the brain and feeding behavior. GLP-1 receptors are found in specific nuclei within the hypothalamus. GLP-1 administration has been shown to induce satiation and decrease cal caloric intake. GLP-1 has been shown to also curb appetite and food intake and promote weight loss in people with diabetes. The ability of GLP-1 analogs to promote weight loss and improve beta cell function could prove to be ideal for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Many people with type 2 diabetes struggle to manage their diabetes, and treatment goals have been dropped, and many do not respond well to older treatments. Thus, these GLP-1 therapies offer new approaches to improve efficacy, tolerability, and convenience. There are indeed side effects, such as nausea and gastrointestinal side effects, and the treatments are more expensive. There has also been shown to be a slight correlation with pancreatitis. But there's amazing pluses, such as strong efficacy, weight loss, low risk of hypoglycemia, unlike the previous traditional treatments, and possibly beta cell preservation and other benefits with this drug treatment. How is the drug administered? Many of the GLP-1 analogs that have been created now are through injection. Novo Nordisk is developing a pill form of their treatment semaglutinide, its GLP-1 agonist, with a planned debut in about 2019-2020. Intarsia is developing an implantable GLP-1 called ITCA650 mini pump. So now let's learn about what treatments 